Good morning and welcome to 365 Days of Amazing Stories with Theo Mayer. Here we are on day 249 and I'm continuing the story of Nur al-Din Ali ibn Bakar and the slave girl Shams al-Nahar from 1001 Arabian Nights. Karan al-Rashid, what a figure. What an incredibly powerful man he was. The Caliph. He had men to serve him, to protect him, to advise him, so that his rulings were always in alignment with what would be best. He was thoughtful considerate, compassionate. And he often went out into the city in disguise to really see and hear what life was like for those living under his rule. And in this way, he won great favor with the people, not that they knew that he was out there amongst them, but because he had compassion and understanding for them and ruled in such a way that uh, people pledged their allegiance to him, life was good because of the things that he created and imposed upon the people. Shams al-Nahar was his favorite concubine. And for all the years that she had lived, there in his, his palace and his jurisdiction, his realm, she had enjoyed it and she had enjoyed the favor that uh, he gave to her. She didn't go against him. She honored him. She loved him. She did her best to serve him in every way that she knew because he had given her a beautiful life. And so the days passed for her quite beautifully until she had set eyes on Nur al-Din. Now Nur al-Din, Persian prince, well-to-do, well-mannered, well-educated, a little bit not knowing what to do with himself, but it would come. And then the two of them met and their lives changed. And they felt a love for each other that stirred within their hearts such passion that they did not know what to do with it. How could they embody the lives that they had been living, knowing that they longed to be in the embrace of another? They longed to be in the presence of another. Time spent anywhere but that. Almost not worth living. And here they risked all to, to be together even for such a brief moment. But when the eunuchs, the guards arrived at the door to inform Shams al-Nahar that the caliph, Haran al-Rashad, wanted to be with her that night, the two men Abu al-Hassan and Nur al-Din, they quaked with fear. Thus was the power of Haran al-Rashad. They knew that their lives were at stake for being in the palace of pleasure, the palace of paradise. And Shams, Shams al-Nahar, though she knew she could handle the situation, 
the conflict that came up inside of her was unlike anything that she had ever experienced or thought that she would ever experience at all. She had to be called to duty. The men had to be hidden away up in the gallery. And she had spent as much time as she could talking to her beloved Nur al Din before there was no time left and the caliph was walking toward her quarters. She met him. Haran al-Rashid was drunk. He had to be supported by two of his guards just to stay walking upright. Shams al did her best to welcome him with an empty heart. Haran al-Rashid was led to a couch, which he sat down. Shams al came to sit down with him. They chatted briefly. Wine was served. Shams al Nahada was so flustered, so beside herself, so out of herself, that she slipped off her chair onto the ground. Meanwhile, Abu al Hassan is watching from the gallery all that is going on. Candlelight making the night into day around her al Rashid and Shams al-Nahar. He watched as she tumbled to the floor. He turned to Nur al-Din and saw that the same had happened to him. Nur al-Din could not even watch, had not watched at all when the caliph came in. Abu al Hassan remembered the amount of jewels that he had seen, <clears throat> the opulence was like nothing he had ever seen before. Abu al Hassan looked down at his friend who was passed out on the floor and he said, ah, so be it. The two lovers, it's only fitting that the same fate is befalling them at this point. Maids rushed to the aid of Shams al-Nahar. And as all this went on, the maid who had been left caring for and watching for the appropriate time to help the two men escape came in and said, we must go. There's a brief window of time now that we may escape. Abu al Hassan looked at her and said, What are we to do? Look at this man. Can you revive him? Now she quickly returned with rose water and incense and carefully brought Nur al Din back to consciousness. The two of them raised him up and they made their way out of the gallery down the stairs and into the darkness of the garden. The maid leading the way as she helped to support Nur al-Din made her way to a little jetty that, made, that went out into the river that was there beside the garden. She clapped her hands twice and out from the shadows appeared a boatman three of them loaded in to the boat and the boatman began to row across the river. And we will leave the story there as Scheherazade must have to find out tomorrow what happens next. Okay, thanks for joining. Have a good rest of your day.